Hey guys, we're back. This time we're taking a look at Aeronautica Imperialis from Games Workshop. I don't normally cover Games Workshop games on the channel. I do play Warhammer 40k and have since really early on 2nd edition. Probably before most of you guys were born that watched this, but... Uh, I uh, just... it's not a hobby that I cover much on the channel. I used to do uh, big battle reports and show our armies we had... A lot of homebrew rules because didn't much care for the newer editions and it's kind of stuck with second edition this whole time but anyway uh, Aeronautica Imperialis is a air combat themed version and set in the world of 40k there was a version of this a while back that was like an expansion add-on to another game now it's its own standalone thing came out a little bit ago and I just um, took my time getting into it and this is the starter box, uh, Wings of Vengeance. And we're going to go over what comes in here, how the game plays, and uh, what my thoughts are on it. I would flip the box over and show the backside to you, but all the models are in here, so I can't really do that. So uh, we'll just get in and take a look. Now it is worth noting, because this is a Games Workshop game, many people might not be familiar but uh, they don't come pre-assembled figures for your game like most things. You literally get full model kits that come on spruces. And they come on a lot. These are just the ones from the starter set here. And you literally have to clip off every individual little piece on here and assemble these models from scratch. The nice thing is that uh, they're very detailed models. I give credit for that. Games Workshop's amazing at that. But... They can be a little pricey. They do give you a massive amount of extra bits, which I have in here. And you can see all the little extra. There's a couple different turret options. It's kind of hard to see with the plastic. Sorry for the crinkling. But there's different missile options in there. And all kinds of bombs, fuel tanks, and things. So you can really customize a bit of your planes. So I was kind of disappointed that there aren't any... Um, armor plating or things that you can put on to further customize the, the planes but you do get armament customizations for the underwing mounts here and there's a couple different variants for the front turret rear turret and uh, I think they only came with one of the dorsal turrets there but that's a uh, Imperial Guard Marauder Bomber and you get two of those in this set. And then you have the uh, Thunderbolt Fighters. And again, um, the front, the nose cannons are optional. You have different uh, designs of those. The under weapon mounts. For the missiles are changeable and I think that's about it on these. Also the instructions are very unclear on these and you will glue uh, this section here together wrong. There's a little piece that goes like back behind there I think and I had to rip one of mine apart. I'm not even sure which one it was because uh, it didn't work. So pay very close attention to the instructions but you get two of those as well. And I will give them credit, the one thing that I really did like is that the Orc Fighters have a lot more customization and every one of them is different. You can see this one here kind of has a shark mouth. With the guns coming out of the eyes. You have these exhaust pipes here. Then we have this one. It's got kind of a Snub nose here, the machine guns are underneath, and it has uh, three tails, where the uh, first one had two. And the pipes are quite a bit smaller. These are also interchangeable, I think you can swap out the exhaust pipes on any of them. And these also, again, as the other ones have different underwing mounts, this one just has a ton of uh, heavy shooters on it. And then the third one. Has a more classic F-16 type nose cone on it. Some missiles and bombs under there. 
and you get uh, three of those orc DACA jets, they call them. There's three of those. And the orc fight Obama. Again, not too much customization on these, aside from the uh, choices of what to put under the wings. And you get two of those. You can see they have slightly different intakes on the front. I do like that they took the time to uh, model them slightly different in parts so that they're not the same because no two orgy vehicles would be. But then you also get bases. And this feels like a failed uh, missed opportunity to me. All of the bases are identical. And you have different size pegs. And these pegs just kind of set into the hole there. I might glue mine in because sometimes when you go to pick the plane up by these, the bases fall off. I'm not sure. But uh, seems like a missed opportunity that all of the bases are the same. It would have been really easy to theme. Uh, these look very Imperial Guardish the way they are. The uh, Aeronautica Imperial House logo on there. It would have been really easy to make one of these kind of beat up and scuffed up with like bolted on parts with an orc symbol down here instead. It, and then they could have done a different one for each faction so that you would have faction themed bases. I'm sure people will put up uh, 3D printable files to do just that if they aren't already up because it's just a very thematic thing. And these have dials on the side here that change for your um, altitude as well as your current speed. And that's how you keep track of those. Every plane's going to have one of these. And they have these neat little ball and socket setups on there so that when you have them sitting on the table, they can be angled um, all different ways while still be sitting on the base. So, very cool uh, mounting option. They started doing that with some of the 40K vehicles. I think people were originally doing it with magnets anyway, so they could do that same effect. So it made sense to make them permanent. So aside from the models in here, you get a whole bunch of tokens, which of course do not come with a, ba or a bag or anything, so you got to supply your own for that. There's also a pile of generic D6s. Again, got to get your own bag for those. Then you get this really nice, it's almost a hardcover book. It's got like thick uh, cardboard covers with painted versions of the models in there so you can see what they look like. I don't know if mine will ever get painted because I suck at painting models and I hate doing it. But the rule book that comes with this is literally a basic rule book. It does not have everything you need to know. It is everything you need to know to play a game with the um, components that are in this set, but not a lot of the basic rules. Uh, not a lot of the more advanced rules. Like, you have bombs on your vehicles, but there's nothing in this entire book explaining bombs or how to use them. So they're kind of pointless to take. There are missions and things in the core rule book, which is something you have to buy separately, that expand on that. And when you get to the back here, yeah, the scenario section, there's literally only one scenario listed in the entire book which is kind of a letdown. Normally a starter book has two or three different to let you try out some different things. They really don't. The other thing missing from this game are these cool stat cards that you can get that have the plane on it, different options, and basically that's all the information you need to know about a plane. Surprisingly, those don't actually come in the set. You have to buy those separately per faction in a little box set. It's kind of the GW way to do things. Um, maybe I'm spoiled by, um, Gale Force 9's Tanks game, which in the original box set came with the cards for every vehicle available at the time, and you could flip through those cards and see, hey, this is a really cool looking vehicle, I'm gonna go buy that one. Where this is the exact opposite, it doesn't come with any, so you don't even know what other vehicles are out there until you go looking. So, it's definitely a marketing thing, but kind of disappointing at the same time. Um, the way the maneuvering works in this, it kind of reminds me a lot of a Wing or X-Wing, except it's done on a grid system instead of with templates. 
And those are the different maneuvers you can do. We'll get into that more. I think there's separate cards for those. And there's a big uh, quick reference section in the back. But a little disappointed that the rule book that comes with the starter isn't as useful as the um, actual rule book. And a lot of people will suggest if it's something you're seriously looking into, uh, skip the starter set and go straight to buying the core rule book and the planes you want because you get a better deal on planes and more options in the rule book by buying the base stuff rather than the starter. Next we have a couple of these quick reference sheets and on the back they have all the different maneuvers you can do. Straight level flight, a swoop turn, which is basically this is your initial position. You can go either of these ways and then end up facing any of those ways. And uh, you pick these maneuvers like you would in the other games. On um, this one, you're going to put a token down that has a one through whatever. Depending on the maneuverability of your plane, you'll have access to different ones of these. They're quite um, open. These, these drawings don't do them well uh, justice until you really look into the game. Because you can do these maneuvers at any point. And depending on how you're doing them, you can literally... Uh, end up in a completely different place how you plan out your turn but stall turns are cool because you can basically do a complete u-turn lots of different ones i think the majority of people use the uh, number twos because you can end up just about anywhere um it really depends on the plane what you're trying to do nothing in the game currently does the wing over turn uh, i think they're saving those for the eldar if when those ever come out. And on the other side of the maneuver thing is a quick reference sheet that goes through turn summaries, how to do everything throughout the different phases. And then in the bottom here we actually have our map. And it's a pretty good sized map but it's actually slightly smaller than the suggested um, size for the game. And I can't go out far enough. Try picking this up. It's going to be kind of jerky for a second there, but it's just under a 36 by 36 map. Uh, I think these are 11 inch squares instead of 12, mainly because they used a default, uh, I think it's a 12 by 12 box size, and it had to fit inside the box. So the map is slightly scaled down to that. They do offer these maps in a tile format which makes them full uh, 36 by 36 size. I'm thinking, I don't know if they do yet, but I, I would be almost assured that they are going to have a um, neoprene play mats at some point, if not just vinyl ones. And then you have a deserted city, sorry for the glare. Then you have a city on one side and then the desert on the other. And it, Hard to see on camera, but it shows up really good in person. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can see these hex grids, and they are just big enough for the models to be in. Also in the bottom of the box there, there are these uh, instruction manuals for each of the four types of planes that come in the set. And they have assembly instructions. Pretty easy for uh, most of the parts. I think those are the ones I put in backward. Maybe. I'm not sure. There was one piece on these planes I put together backward and didn't realize till after and I had to rip them all apart. <laughs> but that was me. Um, just keep an eye out for that stuff. Test foot stuff before you put glue on and you should be fine. And like I said, there's one for each of the four planes in the set here. You also get a sticker sheet here with water transfers for the Imperial planes as well as the Orc planes. You can do whatever you want with those to decorate them after you paint them. Like I said, I'm not sure if mine are ever going to be painted, so it may be a while. And then at the very bottom is a poster with colored printouts 
of the different planes. So you can check them out. Yeah, see? No way I'd ever be able to paint something like that. With flames. But I'm not sure why this is even in there, but it makes a nice bottom box insert. So on to the gameplay itself. Uh, because you don't have those nifty little cards that would come in so handy, you're going to have to keep referencing these pages here. I would honestly either copy down the information you need off of these or print, take a picture and print these just so you have them on hand uh, until you decide if you really want to buy the full um, deck of them. I will say in the deck there are like hero cards, there's pilots you can put on and other equipment. So it is worth picking up if you're into the game, but otherwise, yeah, just use the starter set ones here. These will do. And you have to look at your stats here. Every plane has a structure point. This is how much damage you can take before your plane basically is destroyed. In this case, the Thunderbolt can take three damage. Can't transport anything. Fuel's not really a thing. Uh, throttle is two, means you can raise or lower your speed by two. The uh, ace maneuvers you can do, so on that little chart, you can do maneuvers one through six. Handling is a three plus. Your minimum speed is a two, so if you ever fall to a one, your plane will go into a stall and you have to try to recover before it crashes. Your maximum speed is a six. If for some reason you ever go above a six, you have to roll to see if your pilot can handle it or the plane starts shaking itself apart, basically. And then you have a maximum altitude of five. If you ever exceed that, you have to check to see if you go into a stall. And those stats are different for every plane. You see there, the bombers can only go altitude of five, max speed of five, uh, four plus handling, one to three maneuvers. So you can't do the maneuver five or six with the plane. And they only have a one throttle control, but they have five structure points, which means it takes a few hits to knock them out. And then it's also worth noting your fore and aft weapons. So on like your DACA jets, all of your weapons are forward facing. Oh, and that's another one. I'm not sure which one it was. One of the DACA jets, I think it's this one. The wings actually curve upward slightly and you will inevitably glue these wings on upside down. I'm not the only one who did. Uh, I saw a couple other people on YouTube did it too. So keep an eye on that while you're putting that one together. But um, So in that case, most planes have all forward-facing weapons. However, there are some that have turreted weapons or rear-facing weapons. So in the case of the bombers here, they have a rear turret. This can shoot at people in your rear arc as well as a top gun that will has a 360 degree arc. And uh, you should be facing the arrow on the base is the front. That's the way the plane should be facing. And you use these little lines on here are your arcs. You can see uh, forward arc, flank, flank, and rear arc. Now I'm not going to go into a whole detail on how to play because there's a lot of how to play videos out there. But the basics are that you're going to um, choose your maneuvers. So based on those maneuvers that your plane can take, the numbers uh, 1 through uh, 5, 1 through 6. Uh, like I said, there's 8s, but no plane in the game takes an 8 yet. But you're going to put these chips down next to your planes to represent what they're going to do. When everybody's done with that, you're going to roll an initiative, which is you roll a d6 for each player. And depending on what you get, the person with the highest score gets initiative for the turn. First thing you check for is tailing fire. So if you manage to get a plane in behind another plane, this one's crooked too. So if you manage to have a plane like this in behind another plane where He's in your front fire arc. You're not in his fire arc. That means um, you basically get a free round of shooting at the plane in front of you. So it's always nice to end your previous turn uh, directly behind something. Now, if you're behind a plane like this, who has a rear fire arc, keep in mind he can also return fire on you. So you, you have to 
think about that where you're where you're placing yourselves but it's all down to pretty much common sense um, altitude in this game doesn't mean a whole lot because there are no obstacles. I've seen people make uh, 3D terrain buildings and things, so you have to worry about that. But in this, you only have to be within one plus or minus of the target in order to um, shoot at them. So keep that in mind. Then next you go on to movement, and the person who won the initiative gets to choose first. You pick one of your planes and activate it. So in this case we're gonna pick this guy. You reveal his maneuver. He's doing a one which is straight level flight. He's only depending on the speed on your dial you have to go um, the amount of speed you currently have on your dial in that amount of spaces. Now this is where your throttle control comes in. You can accelerate, you can decelerate depending on your throttle control if you climb and decide to raise altitude. So say I'm on a, on a two here and I want to climb up to a three, you automatically lose one. So if I was only going speed one here and I wanted to climb, I'm going to drop to speed zero, which is going to put me into a stall. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, likewise, if I'm on three and I want to drop down to altitude one, that's going to gain speed. So I'm actually going to speed up from doing so. So it pays to start the game at a higher altitude on the edge of the board and you can dive down in. Just be watching of that uh, velocity max wherever you hit your top speed so you don't tend to shake yourself apart. You need to keep uh, keep in mind that, that maximum speed of your plane versus the altitude you're at and knowing, hey, if I this turn I want to dive down one, which is going to accelerate me by one. So if I drop my throttle back one and dive down, now I'm going to gain that back and I won't max out. Whereas if I kept my throttle the same and did that dive, I'm going to speed up. And so there's, there's some thought put into that as well. Then for the rest of the movement, you take turns. So the person with the initiative moves one of their planes. So he moved one. I'm not going to mess with altitude and speed and all that, but you get the idea. Then they're going to move one. Say he did a turn. He's going to come over here and then turn the face this way. And then you, you just take turns back and forth. He goes two forward and he's going to make one, two, and turn. I don't even know what maneuver that would be, but you get the idea. And then um, once everybody's done moving, you go to the fireman phase, or firing phase. The person who moved first, so the person with the initiative, gets to choose to fire first. Once again, they pick whatever aircraft they want. They take a shot with that aircraft, then your opponent takes an aircraft, fires with it, you pick another one, and so on until all have gone. Then finally, you move into an end phase, starting with the player who has the initiative. If you have any planes that have stalled, you need to try to recover. That's when you do that. Uh, whether you're tailing another plane or not by being behind him, that's also uh, figured out at this point so that it's ready to go for the next turn. Uh, and it is worth noting that, uh, I kind of skipped over it, but during the movement phase, there is a specific order. You have to adjust your throttle first, then you move your spaces, then you can adjust your altitude. So keep that in mind. There, there is an order to that when you're planning out your moves. Also during combat, some of your weapons have a limited number of ammo, things like rockets. You need to keep track every time you fire, however you, how many you're firing, you need to subtract that amount from your ammo. And then, when he, once we said there, we got to the end phase, you're going to check for planes that have stalled. Anything that has stalled that turn needs to roll a uh, check. Uh, anything that's stalled in the previous turn and uh, needs to recover from a spin, they will do that next. Then you figure out who's tailing, like we already mentioned, and then it ends the, uh, the turn. Uh, this is also when you check to see if anybody's meet a, uh, met the victory conditions, which depending on the scenario, uh, if for some reason all of one's faction are gone from the table, say they were shot down or whatever, the other one wins at that point too, uh, despite other objectives. You got those to figure in as well. As I said, I was going to glaze over the, the play very quickly. 
Uh, if you're really interested in that, there's plenty of videos out there where you can check out the actual combat phases and like a turn-by-turn -turn tutorial. So that's a quick look at Aeronautica Imperialis. Um, what do I think of it? I like the combat aspect of it. I like that it's a more simplified uh, version of air combat. Some people might be put off by uh, the way some of the maneuvers kind of seem uh, impractical the way they work out. Uh, mainly it's because you're playing a 3D game with a 2D format since the planes don't actually have altitudes. It looks kind of weird when you see a plane kind of going this way, stop, turn around. You have to vision in your head that they're doing a pull up, turn around, and dive back down, or a crazy Ivan or something like that to uh, make that kind of maneuver, which the game doesn't really get into. So there's a lot of storytelling you have to do yourself. There's a lot of storytelling you have to do yourself in your head to make sense of the things. As a quick skirmish game though, I think it works really well. I like the um, the detail on the models, the quick nature of the game. I mean, it doesn't take that long to play, and they took things into consideration like altitude and acceleration, the uh, range to target affects the amount of dice you roll on some weapons, and it definitely gets better when you have more variety of vehicles to choose from which can be bought separately uh they come in packs i think i want to say you get six daca jets in a pack which isn't bad at all uh you might get four of the thunderbolts i'm not sure about the others i think you get two marauders in a pack they're not crazy priced for games workshop when you compare them to their other lines they're still kind of pricey though, but at the same time you don't need a ton to make a playable force. I would suggest though, as I mentioned earlier, if it is a game you're looking into, you might want to steer clear of the starter set and go directly for the hardcover rulebook and then just buy the factions you want. Because like in this case you get half of a pack of the fighters where you're probably going to want a couple more of these if you're an orc player so you're probably gonna buy another pack anyway now you're gonna have nine fighters which is too many i think so there's something like that to look at if you buy a box directly you only have the six so a lot of people have suggested that you don't get a lot in this pack for the value but if it's something you just want to try to try the game out i do think it's worth that I will say in the core book here with the one scenario they offer, the Imperial planes are at a huge advantage. Uh, you get one more plane and the Orc side, but I think honestly they should have had maybe one more. Four fighters might have balanced it out a little bit more. Points wise, I guess they balance, but at the same time, uh, just battle wise, if you're using the core box the way it is, expect to lose as the orcs now once you get into buying some of your own stuff and building your own forces you can definitely uh, compensate for their weaknesses but the starter set here is definitely not balanced as far as that goes um, in all of the gameplay videos i saw of this before i picked it up i think only one of them the orcs actually won and that's because the person playing the uh, barrel guard was terrible <laughs> Not that it, it makes for fun games, it's just expect that it is not balanced out of the box either. But it is a fun way to learn the game and check it out and see if you're interested in it. If you are, then you can get into the other things. There's a bunch of different orc planes. Uh, there's a new Grot Bomber which fires these little missiles that have little Gretchen that pilot them basically. And uh, they're homing missiles, you can steer them around the board, they're kind of fun. Uh, Imperial Guard now have Valkyries and some other stuff. Um, Lightnings, the little light fighters. Uh, and there's a new core set out that also introduces the Tau. And they have the Barracuda and things like that that you can check out for them. Uh, I may be getting the box set of that at some point, so I might do a video on that. But again, there's also the hardcover rulebook, 
which has a lot more scenarios and things in it, a lot more special rules for like ground fighting and things. Uh, there are the card decks that you can buy for each of the factions that come with a bunch of new equipment and special cards for ace pilots and things like that. There are um, a hardcover campaign book that actually has a campaign of, of missions you can play together as a scenario. There are um, two, I want to say maybe three of those now. I know there's a new one that came out with the Tau. But uh, it's, a, it's a cool, interesting game, and I want to see more of it. I just, uh, I got to get myself the actual book because I don't even have the hardcover book. I started with the starter set here, and I uh, need to expand that. So that's my next step on this. So I might do a video about the hardcover book when I get it, and definitely about the towel box set when I get that. Anyway, if it looks like something you're interested in, check it out. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.